This time we want to cover beehive products. First one we'll look at is honey. That's the most common uh, product of the beehive. And honey is derived from nectar. Nectar is gathered from the flowers by the bees from nectar bearing flowers. Now not all flowers produce nectar but some do and it, the nectar is there as an attractant to the bees to encourage the bees to come to the flowers which in the process causes pollination. The bees gather the nectar from the flower and the nectar is 80% water. It is the balance of 20% of sucrose and, and other minor proteins. The ripening process of honey from nectar to honey is caused by the bee. The bee gathers the nectar and in the process adds enzymes to the nectar. The enzymes in the nectar break down the sugars from sucrose into honey which has fructose and glucose. Both sugars that humans can assimilate. So honey finally becomes the main sugars of fructose and glucose which our bodies can consume without pre-digestion. If we are to eat sucrose we have to digest it ourselves, add the enzymes ourselves and turn it into glucose before we can gain energy. By eating honey the, work, the bees done the work for us and the honey glucose and fructose will give humans instant energy. So honey is the main product of the beehive as most beekeepers in the world are honey producers. But there are other, other products also that the bees produce and the other one is pollen. Pollen is the protein food of bees. Honey is the energy food so bees must have honey and pollen. The protein value of pollen is exceptionally high. It has the 23 elements of the human body. All vitamins and all minerals required by the bees are in flower created pollen. Again this means bees not only gather honey and cause pollination while they're gathering honey, they also gather pollen for their own food consumption which again creates pollination of plants. So honey bees are the greatest pollinators on earth, they're the greatest insect pollinators we have and our whole human race really depends on the pollination of all our fruit crops by honey bees as the major pollinating insect. All countries developing a beekeeping industry should be doing it for that aspect alone. They should be developing a beekeeping industry to enhance their production of agricultural crops and food crops for humans using the pollination from the honey bees to enhance their production of crop. Honey really in the world is a byproduct. Pollination is the greatest gift that bees have for, for humankind. We can harvest the pollen and it's, it, it comes in a granule form which is gathered straight from the flower. That is also consumable by humans 
although our bodies don't have the ability to break it down completely uh, and utilize it fully because it's a bit like a grain of wheat or a seed it has a very hard shell and it's reasonably difficult for our bodies to digest but it is also still a very good uh, supplement health food for humans and uh, this is trapped from the bees under special traps it's, it's freeze dried and packaged and processed and sold in some markets around the world as a health food so it's, it's quite uh, uh, palatable to eat and, and very good for you as a, as, a, as a diet supplement so that's the bees food that and honey and water a hive of bees requires honey, pollen and water for survival. The other product that uh, a uh, bee produces is beeswax. Now this is raw beeswax as the bees have produced it. Wax is essentially a fat. So if you boil this in water it will homogenize and, and disintegrate. So if you, but if you heat it gently in water, it'll come to a liquid and then it'll return into a solid. So wax is a byproduct of beekeeping. In, in our processing of honey, extraction of honey, we gain quite a bit of wax. Now wax has got a value uh, at present of about $4.50 uh, per kilogram of bulk wax. So it's another byproduct income for beekeepers. So they should save their the surplus wax and it's got a market. The use, for back, the use for beeswax, apart from beekeepers, beeswax is used by beekeepers to make our comb foundation. The wax foundation that we looked at earlier is created by melting and milling this in a machine to turn into these sheets of wax. These sheets of wax are used by all beekeepers as the foundation for new combs in their hives. So this is natural beeswax which the bees can now build on and make a honeycomb. The other use for beeswax, the secondary use for beeswax in the world is for candles for the Catholic Church predominantly because the Catholic Church uh, has used candles, beeswax candles, because it's pro produced by a virgin bee. It's produced by a worker bee and it's the purest form of wax on earth. So therefore it has been used extensively through the Catholic Church for, for altar candles and for church candles. So that's been a big user. The next big user of beeswax is the cosmetics industry. All lipstick Face creams, hair creams, many, many of those products, cosmetic products, are based on beeswax because beeswax is safe on your skin, it's good for your skin, it's non-toxic, and it's a very good base substance for, for most cosmetics. Apart from that, you can make furniture polish, you can make uh, shoe polish, you can make candles for your use at home, uh, you can use it for uh, putting in baking trays to stop uh, bread sticking to a, to a tray. The biscuit industry in Fiji uses a lot of this to, to coat their biscuit trays uh, to, as, a, as a release agent so the biscuits don't stick. So there's, there's many uses for, for beeswax and it's, it's, a, it's a very good universal product. It's safe to eat, it's non-toxic and so therefore it's a, it's a very valuable product or a byproduct of bees and not many people know the, the value of it. So you've got beekeepers, candles, cosmetics, and polish. If you want to make that into a liquid, you can mix it with turpentine. Mineral turpentine and beeswax will liquefy the beeswax. And then you can use it as a wood polish for polishing tables, furniture, or your boots or shoes. So it's very simple. And again, probably a useful product uh, in rural areas where, where access to, to uh, wood polishers and shoe polishers and things like that may be limited. Uh, people in, the, in a village environment could make good use of this for candles and for a shoe polish and for polishing timber.
So uh, particularly making artefacts and things like that, people use a lot of this sort of thing for polishing artefacts for sale to tourists. So those are the, the, the number three. There's a fourth product which is propolis. And propolis is, this is a, a tincture of propolis which has been broken down into a liquid form where it can be used by humans. Propolis is is produced by the bees and used by the bees to protect themselves against infection in the hive. The bees gather the propolis resins from buds of trees. They bring it back to their hive and they coat everything in their hive with propolis. And even every time an egg or a bee hatches from a frame, the, the cell that the bee hatches from is coated with propolis to sterilize it before the next bee goes in. Now if you think about honeybees, they go outside, they get contaminated, they crawl all over each other inside the hive, they feed each other, they are in a situation without a very good antibiotic system or a, a disease control system within their hives, they could not exist. 50,000 bees in, in one unit couldn't exist for very long. If we put humans in that concentration, we, we couldn't survive. Bees have learned to survive through the use of propolis. Every part of the hive is coated with propolis. Propolis is antibacterial. Antiviral and anti fungal. So, no bacteria, virus, or fungus can live in this product. My spelling might be a bit yeah. anti fungal. So, we get we can extract this product from the hive as a byproduct. It is good for treatment of wounds externally, internally in humans. It's sophisticated in its process, but the actual production and collection of the raw material from the hives is within the reach of every beekeeper. So we, we buy the raw material from the hives here at about $80 a kilogram. So it's another byproduct that beekeepers can get from their hives apart from honey. They can save their wax and they can, they can scrape the surplus propolis from their hives and bring that in for sale as well. And uh, we, we can then process it on into a, a, a product which is used for human consumption. So they are, they are the main honey, pollen, wax and propolis are the main products of the hive. There are other things that you can eat. You can eat the bees if you want to and you can produce royal jelly and, and several other products from a hive which are probably not significant in, in the beekeeping groups that we're talking about. It's probably uh, technologically outside of the area at this stage. So that basically wraps up what I've got to say about bee products. Uh, but honey sure, certainly is the the most easy to produce and the most profitable part of beekeeping for beekeepers. Uh, these other products are byproducts which may add to that income, but most beekeepers would concentrate on honey production. And the good quality honey is what the world needs. There's a shortage of honey worldwide, so the demand for honey is increasing and the population is increasing as well. So there's uh, Every, there's a good market potential for honey for, for a long time to come.